3M reported earnings this week, and I thought it'd be good to go through the company's earnings reports. Whether or not you're a shareholder of 3M, this is one of those instructive companies that kind of tells you the downside of buying a stock for a dividend or because you think it's a value. You have to look at the strategic position that a company is in. 3M has essentially gone nowhere over the last 20 years from an investment perspective, and a big reason is the company doesn't have a lot of differentiation. It's not leaning into its old advantages that worked for almost a century it's leaning into things like being more efficient. Well, being more efficient, you're not gonna out-efficient lower cost countries like China, like competitors in Southeast Asia, even competitors in Latin America. So I wanna dig through the numbers and go through what management said about the results and what I'm seeing. So let's dig into the results. My name is Travis Hoyam. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content and thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. If you go to fool.com slash ASYM, they'll give you their top 10 stocks to buy right now. Let's start with a high level look at the numbers. This is the press release and I'm gonna go through the presentation which I think is always important with 3M. But I just wanna look at the framing here. 3M said that they reported results and raised full year 2024 guidance. Technically that's true, but what they really did is raise guidance to the higher end of the range. So not actually a huge improvement based on what they were expecting previously. Management also starts this with, the 3M, de 3M team delivered another strong quarter of operational excellence resulting in a double digit increase in adjusted earnings along with solid adjusted free cash flow generation. Again, technically true, but I do wanna put this into some historical context because 3M's margins are better than they were a year ago, but not better than they were historically, mid 2010s. And the company's not growing. So let's get, so here are the numbers. Sales of $6.1 billion, organic growth of 1%. That's less gross that is less growth than inflation. So 3M is losing market share just to inflation. I'll get to some of the more detailed numbers, but I just think this is the number that I always focus on with 3M. What is the actual organic growth? When I worked there, I was working in the lab. That is what 3M was built on, was organic growth, creating products that nobody had ever seen before. Post-it notes, scotch guards, scotch tape, brightness enhancement films. There's all kinds of things that 3M made they were just invented out of thin air. That's how you grow organically. What in the last 20 years has 3M invented that isn't just an iteration on something they were already making before? Something that investors should be thinking about. So when you look at the numbers here, again, I love that they make these charts look like there is growth. There's basically no growth here. Same thing with operating margin, operating margin up to 23%. That's actually pretty good for 3M. Uh, and then earnings per share up to $1.98 in the quarter. And then they do a breakdown of their operating margin changes. So 21.6% a year ago, what actually improved organic growth and productivity. Productivity would be basically cost cutting and then restructuring, restructuring charges, and then a little bit of headwind from foreign currency. So that is what's driving this improved margin. It's basically productivity. And again, here's that raised guidance. This is the raised portion of it, the flat, flat to 2% revenue growth on an uh, organic basis, what they were expecting, now expecting about 1%. So clearly not a real raise there. And then adjusted operating margin and adjusted earnings per share just move to the higher end of the range. So I guess they technically increase guidance, but not really because it's still within the same old range. This table with the business segment information, this is all information that 3M used to give a lot more detailed information about each of their segments, but they're clearly not doing that under the current leadership. So you can see organic growth in safety and industrial, 0.9%, 2% for transportation and electronics. Transportation is actually doing pretty well right now. That would be things like the auto business. I'll get to what is included in some of these segments in a second, but some of those businesses are growing in double digits. 3M clearly not keeping pace with that. So that's what's concerning about the business is that these Organic growth numbers are pretty anemic when you consider that the end markets that they're serving are actually doing pretty well. And then consumer, been a lot of pullback in the consumer market, so that's down just a little bit. Maybe not a huge surprise there, but you obviously wanna be growing in each one of these segments. If we go back up here to additional gap sale, sales details, this breaks down what is included in each of these segments. So safety and industrial includes a whole bunch of things, but you have abrasives, which is actually goes back to the origin of 3M, that was actually down slightly, automotive aftermarket, electrical markets. There was some growth in industrial adhesives and tapes. That's where you are seeing some organic growth. And then a little bit of growth in roofing granules. But most of these segments are either flat or slightly down for the quarter. Transportation and electronics, 
that's where you're seeing the reported numbers are down and that's pretty clear across the board. Advanced materials is down, automotive and aerospace, that would be the more new automotive products and aerospace is gonna be products that they're providing to Boeing and Airbus, companies like that. That was down pretty sharply. Commercial branding and transportation, essentially flat and electronics up just a little bit. Consumer business down basically across the board. Home improvement was the one area that there was a little bit of strength. So again, not phenomenal results from 3M. And I wanna put some of these numbers into context historically. This is a chart that shows 3M's gross margin and operating margin over the past decade. This is where when you look at something like a 23% gross margin, that looks really good. Looks like a big improvement from last year, but look how low the numbers were last year. You have a bunch of things that go into that. There's litigation expenses. There's generally been a weak demand environment for some of 3M's product lines, but the general trend for 3M is that these margins have been marching lower for years. And that is the real challenge for the business is that you can only squeeze so much efficiency when you're not bringing out new products, new innovations that are gonna have higher margins than some of your older products. 3M has been playing this efficiency game for more than 20 years now, since Jim McNerney took over in the early 2000s. What that has led to is anemic sales growth, and now we're starting to see those margins slip. Maybe they're able to get back up to historical numbers, but I don't think that really saves the business overall. Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. So the bottom line is, can you get excited about an industrial company that's growing at a slower rate than inflation? I think the answer is absolutely not. This is a company that generally is losing its power in the market. It has leaned away from doing the things that it did really well for almost a century. Things like R&D, building new technologies, new product lines. We haven't seen any of that at 3M over the past 15, 20, 30 years. So that's really the core problem with 3M. And the efficiency that the company seems to be squeezing out of the business right now is really what started this problem in the first place. It was in the early 2000s that they really started to focus on Six Sigma, on lean, doing everything a little bit more efficiently, getting those margins up. But if you're not investing that money back in R&D, your bottom line is ultimately gonna suffer. And that's exactly what we're seeing at 3M. I don't see any signs that that is gonna turn around and 3M is gonna be even outgrowing inflation over the next couple of years. So that's why this is just a stock that I would stay away from. PE multiple looks really cheap right now, 13 times earnings. On a next 12 month basis, goes up to about 16.6 times earnings. But I wanna put this also into context. In 2002, 3M stock was trading for about $60 per share. Right now, shares are trading for about $124. So 22 years ago, you could have bought 3M stock and the share price would have about doubled to right now. And what indication is there of the, the 3M to date, that the numbers that we've seen reported, the strategy that management has laid out, what indication is there that anything is gonna turn around about this business? I think this is just one of those companies that is in a very poor strategic position because they're not investing in what they do best, which is what they used to do best, which was R&D and inventing new things. They're now trying to move into efficiency and that's an area where you're not in a strong position in the market when there are cheaper places to manufacture goods. So again, just a stock I would stay away from right now. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching everybody. See you here next time.